Uh, a huge amount of volatility characterising the previous month's trading, ultimately ending with not much of anything. Going into the new month, it seems like we have the same themes. Is there more, uh, I guess, durability or, or sustainability to any rally that we could see? I think we need to be worried about uh, longer term here that this isn't the bounce that, that everybody uh, wants and that it's going to turn into a, uh, a sustained rally. I'm, I'm afraid that that's going to be the case. I think that when we look at what's happening, you know, economic activity has been good. Earnings have been good. Liquidity is still good. So everything that we saw was multiple compression. So that if we really expect to see a better market, we need to argue one of two things, that we're going to see some kind of uh, extended multiple expansion again, or stocks can still outperform or they can still do well if, um, if multiples are compressing, but you need earnings to be very, very good, even better than expected at this point. Both of those things just seem unlikely. So especially as we go into this period where uh, very few times we've seen in modern history of raising rates and uh, uh, pulling down the balance sheet uh, from the Fed to fight very stubborn inflation, it's going to be a, a tough road ahead, I think. So if you're not looking for outperformance when it comes to earnings, what, what is your strategy to navigate the next few months? Are you looking at pockets of outperformance, you know, in some limited respect? Are you looking at inflation hedges? I think it's, it's a bit of both, right? We need to uh, recognize that this market has not really been trading to fundamentals, that, but that it will. It will reconnect with fundamentals at this uh, quite soon. And that means we need to look for quality. We need to find what will, should do well in a market like this, which is... Uh, price, companies with pricing power, um, large cap companies that are, are able to secure financing for uh, a decent price, that have um, uh, good brand exposure, that have he uh, inflation hedges, that are um, really quality, profitable companies at this point. And that means, I think, um, healthcare is a great play. Um, the U.S. equities in general, I think, have a lot of those characteristics. And even some of tech within that large uh, U.S. space is... Uh, is aligned with that. But so are parts of consumer staples, uh, especially those large companies with pricing power that are more geared towards uh, the, um, the the non-substitutable goods. And energy and, and some base materials, I think, will reconnect and do quite well as well. So the bond market uh, is resuming its in its rise in yields. And of course, we know that the, for the U.S. Treasury, the 10 year, it didn't really do much in the month of May. It was volatile, right? But you mentioned right. uh, something very important. You said right now liquidity is still good. The balance sheet runoff is going to get it's going to get big pretty quickly. You mentioned some stocks that will hold up fairly well. Will they still hold up when their liquidity is disappearing, which for, for the past few years, so many people said that's what's driving this crazy bull market in stocks. Absolutely right. This is what we should be focusing on. How, what is going to happen with liquidity in the market? Um, and uh, there's a few things that are, that are still very important to watch. One of those is that... Um, we don't know what the Treasury needs yet in terms of borrowing. So uh, the, the, from the Treasury, from the fiscal side, it'll be an important indicator in to see you know, what the liquidity looks like in the market. But second, the reverse repo facility um, that is taking in this tremendous excess of cash that was uh, printed over the, the pandemic period and, and returning bonds to the market, that is over $2 trillion of, let's call it liquidity on the sidelines. So the reserve balances have been uh, starting to, to be uh, work down, but there's st still just so much, much more than is going to be initially uh, pulled down from the balance sheet runoff. So look, I think it's still there. And I think the important part here is that rates at these levels, yeah, they're going higher, but they're not restrictive. We can still see rising uh, consumer activity and real wage growth is still quite high. The Fed is going to get quite frustrated quite quickly if this is all they're going to do. And I think that that is what people are trying to price into the market going forward. And when you look at earnings, uh, when you look at the sense that there will at least be a slowdown, a softish landing will mean a slowdown, a recession will mean a slowdown. At some point, then investors start looking past. You know, you get past the worst of it, woo, stocks start rallying again. Are, are, are people going to get a little too optimistic too quickly, do you think, Dan? Yes, they're getting too optimistic too quickly if they think we're going to rally right out of this because. You know, it's, I understand that there's a discounting mechanism, but the forecasts haven't even rolled over yet, let alone the earnings. So we need to start. It's really hard to believe that we would get through an entire cycle um, without even seeing the beginning of really rate hikes 
earnings coming down and economic activity getting below what is really this kind of long-term uh, pretty decent rate uh, for both global growth and for, for U.S. growth. So I, that, that's the, to my point in the beginning, um, investors are going to have to start pricing in some of this more challenging environment ahead before we get closer to the bottom.